Warning, warning, there are spoilers ahead. Please pause and click the link in the description to check out this short before we ruin it for you. Hello, I am Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Little Witch Academia. I really think it should have been Academy. Wow, this is a nice little short that was kind of like given to me in the Skype chat room that I usually hang out in. They mentioned they were talking about it. I'm like, um, can I get a link? What, what are you guys talking about? It seems interesting. So they sent me a link, which I'll include in the description because, hey, it's on Crunchyroll. So cool, you can actually watch it legally. <laughs> it is just this cute animation short about a girl who ends up going to a witch academy because she was inspired by this other witch that she saw in a stage show. And it's just sweet, cute, funny, action-packed, and very well animated. <laughs> yeah, the animation flows very smoothly. The storyline has a lot of the usual tropes, and my favorite character is definitely not the lead. <laughs> Neither of our favorite characters are lead. It's the same favorite character. Sophie, if I'm pronouncing it right. She is just... Ugh. <laughs> yeah, cross goth girl with mad scientist, and that's about right. Yeah, my favorite part with her was, excuse me, Mr. Bull, could you open up, please? Thank you! And then everyone's just staring at the hole in the floor of the, after the creature melted. <laughs> and she's laughing maniacally afterwards. I'm like, are we sure this, this, is, this girl's a good guy? Either way, she's cool. Also, please don't ever get angry at me. <laughs> yeah, because apparently even if you're on good terms, you can get experimented on. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, poor Akko. <laughs> That's the main character, by the way. She's reasonably interesting because she's slightly different than the usual stereotypical role that um, she would be filling. Mm, explain to me how, because she screams typical stereotypical lead role to me. Well, it's a little different. Usually in that role, she'd be um, really stupid until the main moment, but she actually shows some intelligence throughout, and then she becomes kind of powerful, and even at the end, she's like, I still don't know how to do this, but I saved everything. Cool. <laughs> So to me, it was a little bit different. It wasn't much different. Like, all the characters are slightly different than their stereotypes. Enough to make them interesting to me, anyways. But Akko deciding she wants to go to the academy because she saw Shiny Chariot as a kid. I mean, when you had that opening scene with Shiny Chariot, I wasn't even sure she was using real magic. I'm like, oh, is this all just a stage show? And then even partway through the episode, I'm like, oh, is she really a real witch? Or was this just all stage magic? Or was she a low-level witch and she washed out and so she did all these stage shows to make money? Especially with everyone talking about how um, she wasn't really looked well upon by the other witches. Mm -hmm. And she gave the wrong idea about witches. And I think there's a hint of why um, everyone looks down on her. Because she makes everyone like witches. Yeah, and even here Diana says witches aren't supposed to be this. They're supposed to be feared. What are you guys doing? So I'm thinking that's what everyone's having issue with is the fact that she made everyone like witches, not fear witches by the sound of it. Or it could just be that her shows were really well attended and she was making a boatload of money. Hmm, that too. And I like details like that, especially when you're like given hints of who it actually is throughout the thing and she's apparently retired because by the sound of it, the staff didn't like really work anymore and it started reactivating thanks to the main character, of course. Yes, stereotypical. Hey, I found this uber strong object and now I'm really powerful because of it. But I still can't fly. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I didn't catch the first time the hints of who Shiny Chariot might be. But it was interesting, you know, that whole, but I thought the lights had been extinguished forever. Which, to me, brought up the question of, hmm. Did Shiny Chariot do something that the magic didn't like, and so the magic stopped answering her? Because we've had it explained to us that the witch's source of magic is that stone that the dragon went after. Hmm. I think it may be because she lost faith in herself because everyone, all the other actual, quote-unquote, actual witches were putting her down. So she lost that belief in herself because, remember correctly, the statement is, your magic comes from your belief, I think? Your magic is the power of your believing heart. Something like yeah. that. So I'm thinking that's what happened. She lost that belief in herself and her powers because everyone was saying, you're not a real witch or, you know, whatever they were putting her down with. Because by the looks of it, since she's an actual teacher, she actually knows 
stuff. So I don't think she was actually a bad witch. It's just the way she used her powers. A lot of the main witch people didn't like her. Well, hopefully we'll get a sequel and maybe some of our burning questions will be answered. Ah, yeah, speaking of which, I found out there is a sequel being made, so that's cool. And speaking of slightly non-stereotypical, I like how the mean girl, Diana, you can tell she's like a stuck-up mean girl, but she's slightly different because right at the point where a normal, standard, stereotypical mean girl would do after she caused trouble, she would blame it on the main character. She was willing to... Own up to the fact that, yeah, I effed up. I blew it. I awoke in the ancient creature. Damn it, I'm going to fix it. <laughs> so that kind of redeemed her from being a standard mean girl character. Well, even before that point, you know, when they were going through the dungeons and her friends were going, we have lots of treasure. And she's like, no, that stuff's worthless. We can do better than this. She's very driven. So it's not like she's the mean girl just because she's the popular girl. She has knowledge and skills to back it up. She's just haughty and a bit of a know-it-all and a little short on tact. <laughs> a little short. <laughs> ah, so any other points you'd like to bring up? Mm, one that Diana's scary and that Iko is way too naively enthusiastic. I mean that tiny little monster that they found in the dungeon. I'm sorry, it was tiny. I would have been like, here, come here. Can you show us where the treasure is? Instead she's like, monster, I'm going to destroy it. It's the size of a grapefruit. <laughs> uh, and as we were talking about before, yeah, Susie's very scary. Yeah, Susie is scary in an entirely different way than Diana. Diana is scary in the real world, mean girl, I have the skills to back up my attitude. Susie mm. is scary because even if you're your friends, apparently you're not safe. <laughs> At least she apparently tries stuff that's not too harmful on you. Oh, it just made your nose grow. <laughs> She's like, well, at least you look like a real witch now. There's just so many fun things in this, and the animation is really smooth. From what I understand, it's actually because they use twice the normal frames as a standard animation, so that makes it a lot smoother and everything. Though, the fact that we both watched it at a lower quality on Crunchyroll, probably we didn't get to see the full smoothness of the animation. No, but it was still very smooth, and I like all the little touches. I really like correction. I really love the look on the dragon's face when it realized what happened when it swallowed the shiny arc arrow. <laughs> yes, that was great. It's like, wait, wait a minute. That was a bad idea. Oh, no. <laughs> and then it was like, oh, well. <laughs> well, I'm almost wondering if that's what happened to it before, you know, because <laughs> it had to be defeated before it got sealed in that Iron Maiden. Mm -hmm. Also, Diana, could you not read what was written on those seals? That screamed, do not open me. <laughs> Keep package sealed this way up. Do not touch. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's just so many little things going on. And I love the touch of how you see her hair glowing red, the teacher, to give you even more hints that, oh, the teacher was this. And I think she was the one who defeated the dragon before. Probably, considering she put that into her stage show. Mm -hmm. Anything else, or shall we wrap it up? Oh, no. Now I just have to be super nitpicky. <laughs> Go right ahead. All right. So the Academy obviously has a school uniform, so it should be pretty much standard issue. So why is Susie taller than Akko and Lottie and her dress is longer? Hmm. That's an interesting nitpick. Didn't even pick up on that. <laughs> it's clothing. You're a guy. Good point. <laughs> Though I'm an artist, so I should be paying attention to these things. <laughs> Also thought it was interesting that the girls rode astride, not side saddle, on the brooms. Hmm. Oh, and that reminds me. And did you notice how Shiny Chariot rode her broom? She actually rode it like she was on a surfboard or skateboard. Yes, I'm guessing that's the advanced class. You know, broomstick surfing, as opposed to the basic flying class that we got to watch. Mm-hmm. And that reminds me. I love how their wands are like multi-purpose. It can be... A glow stick can actually put an attachment on it and it becomes a broom. I really like the broom attachment. I also liked how if you put three of them together, you could conjure an actual broom. But that brings up another nitpick. 
Okay, so Akko asked the other girls for a broom. They say they didn't bring one. Well, obviously they didn't bring a full-size broom, but those medallions are small enough to fit in your pocket. Why didn't you bring one of those? Hmm, and they also collapsed, too. They had, like, multiple uses and multiple forms. That was, like, a really thought-out nice touch. Well, when you have the basic answer of, because it's magic, you can do a lot. And this has been our thoughts on Little Witch Academia. Really seems like it should be Academy. Thanks for listening. If you like Lux's art, you can find him on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Want to keep up to date with what we're doing with these podcasts? You can follow us on Tumblr. Really like this podcast? Leave a friendly comment below. Also, this is YouTube, so please subscribe. Really, really like Lux's art and would like some of your own? He's currently open for commissions. All links in the description.